The following program is brought to you by Adventure Seekers. Enjoy. Fine living. Live like you mean it. Radical sabbatical. Ordinary people who left their careers and risked it all to live their dreams. Coming up, find out why this woman's sabbatical means the world to her. I asked myself a question. Can I live with myself if I don't do this? And the answer was no. And how did this former attorney find such a sweet job? It just hits me. It's like Warren, make cake. Find out on Radical Sabbatic. I think that always in my life, I've been relatively unconventional, so it wasn't a big stretch for me to leave. It just, wow, the whole world. There's really a world out there beyond my, my backyard in the hill and the tree. It's a big blur, and I'm glad that people have tape and people have photos that I can look at and go, yeah, I remember a little bit about that. Polly Latofsky is embarking on a sabbatical of a lifetime. Welcome. Merhaba. <laughs> when she was a child, she read a newspaper story about a man who traveled around the world using a remarkably straightforward mode of transportation, his own two feet. I finally clipped out all the columns and I showed them to my mother and I said, I'm going to do this when I grow up, you know, as you do when you have these grand ideas when you're 12. Now, decades later, Polly has turned her grand idea into reality. After years as a hotel manager in Vail, Colorado, selling group reservations, Polly decided she couldn't put off her dream any longer. I asked myself a question. At the end of my life, am I going to say, boy, I wish I would have? And can I live with myself if I don't do this? And the answer was no. Polly knew that an epic hike like this would bring great personal satisfaction, but she also wanted her dream to have a positive impact on others. So she decided to raise money for a cause that affects women worldwide, breast cancer research. My boyfriend! <laughs> Over a couple of years, there were suddenly a lot of women in my immediate life that had breast cancer. That's when it hit me. Wait a minute. That's what I'll do that walk for that I've always wanted to do. Now's a good time in my life to go. And uh, I started planning my global walk for breast cancer. Yay, end of turkey! <laughs> but before Polly could take the first step on her worldwide journey, there were some radical life changes she had to make at home. I it, it sold or gave away everything. The TVs, the VCRs, and pots and pans and blankets and beds and all the furniture. And I sold it all at a flea market in one afternoon and came back to an empty house. But the money she raised wouldn't be nearly enough to finance her four-year pilgrimage. Polly needed sponsors. Oh, good to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> the Lions Clubs are a major sponsor, and they're in almost every town, so someone is usually in charge of me, whether that means meeting me and taking me to a hotel for the night or something. Uh, thank you very much for, for having me here today and for your support of, of me and my project. Polly was about ready to embark on her solo excursion when she realized there was one final hurdle she had to overcome, her own fear. Fear is something that, that pops into your mind during the planning stages because fear really comes from the unknown. And I don't know what Turkey is like, and I don't know if I can get through Pakistan, and I don't have any idea what India is like. But on August 1st, 1999, 37-year-old Polly Datovsky gathered her courage and bid farewell to Colorado and her old life. She headed west to Arizona, then California. She flew to New Zealand, then Australia, Malaysia, Thailand, India, and now she's in the city of Bodrum, Turkey. There's a sense of freedom and that you feel suddenly, and there's also that sense of achievement, and, and you're just, you're having a high.
When we come back, Polly discovers that hiking around the world is no walk in the park. Very simple things, just such a production. A few years ago, Polly Latovsky's domain was the insular world of a resort hotel in Vail, Colorado, booking reservations for guests. Now, the world is Polly's as she circumnavigates the globe on her own two feet. Sometimes it can be a lonely odyssey, but always full of adventure. I'm looking around, taking, looking for good photos and trying to learn the language. Sometimes I'll carry the language book and study as I'm on the road. Mountain, motorcycle, motorway, mountain, da! Da, da, mountain, da. Yeah. And I do have a Walkman with me and I'll listen to music and sing out loud. Or if they have an English speaking channel, I'll listen to the news and you can learn a lot about a culture through their news. I think the physical part of a journey like this is something that really anyone could do. I think it's the emotional part that, that is tough because every day you get up in a strange place and you head down a road you've never been before to a town that you don't know where it is. Because of the unpredictable nature of her trek, Polly never maps out hard and fast routes between destinations. This freewheeling approach is both a blessing and a curse to go to the bank, find an ATM machine, uh, mail a postcard, make a phone call. Very simple things like that are just such a production. Whenever she can, Polly keeps in touch with her supporters and family via the internet. At night, she stays in hotels provided by her sponsors. There, Polly sometimes receives care packages from the U.S. to help ease her homesickness. Some of the things I miss about uh, my old life are simple things like having a bagel in the morning or, or watching Jay Leno at night, <laughs> you know, having a good laugh and, and uh, going to sleep with that. But thanks to her network of underwriters who have donated money for her walk, this perpetual nomad has often been made to feel right at home, even in far-flung territories like the Australian outback. The truckers would come by and throw me food. My wife made this for you, and they'd throw, throw me food because they can't stop in the middle of the highway. Then there are harder days. When I got into Southeast Asia, uh, there were people, 30, 40 people following me every day, every day, and they don't speak English, you know. So it was difficult. I would be out in front, and they would be following behind, all chatting away, but of course I can't converse with them. Still, Polly wouldn't trade her experience for anything. Even in its, its biggest misery, I know that I'm doing what I want to do and I would rather be there during the miserable times than having a good day at work. <laughs> Ultimately, it's the connection she's making with the diverse people along the way that keeps Polly going strong. I have never met someone, uh, a Kurdish person before. He is my first Kurdish person. <laughs> in turn, Polly has been an inspiration to yeah. everyone she meets. Hey, you made it. <laughs> Merhaba. I'm very glad to meet her. She's my sister anymore. <laughs> now, Polly is eager for the next leg of her journey to begin. I've just finished Turkey, which is the eighth country that I've gone to, and that's about 13,000 kilometers. And so from Turkey, I'm actually going to head into the Greek islands, and I'm going to island hop. I will take a boat to the next island and walk the length of the island and, and go to the next island, etc. The rest of her trek will take Polly across Europe, then down through Canada and the eastern United States, until she finally comes full circle back in Vail, Colorado. I've learned so much in the past three years that I've been on the road that I, even, I, I wonder if I would even recognize the person I was on August 1st, 1999. But the end of the road is a long way off. Polly still has many adventures waiting ahead. I get the question a lot about, do you ever feel like quitting? Have you ever felt like quitting? And there has never been a time when I have thought I've bitten off more than I can chew. There's never been that.
one of the great surprises on this walk is is uh, the the support I've gotten every single day in every single town from people, and that at the end of the day, the world is a pretty darn good place. It's a friendly place and a curious place. Oh, nice. And I want to go to CNN and say, <laughs> say, start reporting the good stuff. Walk through Thailand. See how many coconuts you get. <laughs> it's a good world. It's a world Polly Latovsky would have never known if she hadn't dared to take that radical first step. I would advise people to ask themselves that question. Will you be happy at the end of your life if you did not, in fact, pursue it? Fail if you must, but at least you try.